So one of those areas in WordPress that seems to get a lot of questions asked about is how do you create your own custom headers? Well, with the advent of Elementor 2.0 coming out, they've really ramped up how you can do that. So in this video, I just want to give you a quick demonstration of how easy it is to create your own custom headers and some of the advanced features that Elementor 2.0 is going to bring with it. So let's just jump into the dashboard of WordPress and take a look at how we can do that right now. So before I kick things off, I just want to make you aware that this is the beta version of Elementor 2.0, so it's not the final version, so there may be differences to when that's released in April. Now, we've already had the ability to create custom headers and footers in Elementor Pro for a little while, but they've really ramped up what you can do with these and how we can start to work with them in this beta version. We've now got conditional logic we can tap into. So if you've ever used things like hooks in themes like Ocean WP or in things like Generate Press and in Astra, you'll know that they're very powerful and we can hook different sort of blocks into various different parts of our page. And we can kind of do the same sort of thing with this Elementor 2.0 update. So what I want to do is show you first of all how we can create a custom header and then how we can look at actually hooking that into different parts of the site. So in the dashboard of WordPress, I've got the Elementor menu open on the left hand side and I've already accessed the My Template section. Now you're going to see in here, if you've ever gone into the previous version of Pro Elementor, you had a couple of these different tabs. We now have a lot more options. We've already covered some of these. We've taken a look at the single and the archive in previous videos. Today we're going to focus on the header option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, click on header. That comes takes us through. Because I have nothing created under this category, I now present it with this sort of wizard, which allows us to go and specify what we want to do. So we're going to say add a new header. We've got two options. We're just simply going to give it a name. We're going to call this my header. And then we've got the option, you can see we've got header to choose the template that we're going to create. We said header, so we're going to leave that set as header. Now, obviously, when the full version of this comes out, you're going to find this sort of take a video tool will all be active and you'll be able to sort of take a look at how to do this. For now, it's just hold a text. So let's create our template. That's going to take us into Elementor in the way we'd normally used to seeing it. But what it's going to do, first of all, is it's going to open up the blocks part of the library. Because we specified this as a header, it'll automatically go to that particular category and show us any of the templates that we can pull in. Now, at the moment, there are only two basic templates. We've got a sort of gray template and we've got a black template. And we could use those if we want to. And that's been covered by other YouTubers in depth. So I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to show you how we can use Elementor's key functions and create our own. So we're going to bypass that, we're going to click on the X to get rid of that and take us into Elementor itself. So now we've got the normal page editor. So let's come in and add a new section. We'll set this up to be a simple 50-50. We're going to go in now and make sure that there's no things like margins and so on in there. So what I'm going to do is just simply come to the advanced tab. I'm going to set everything. We're going to zero these things out to make sure everything's lined the way we want it to be. Now, this isn't going to be a lesson in how to use Elementor. It's just a quick lesson in showing you how you can create your own custom menus and headers. Okay, so we've got things set up. I'm going to set this to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is just drag that over to about 25%, 20%, somewhere around there. That's going to be where our logo sits on the left-hand side, and our menu is going to take up the right-hand side. So a very simple menu system. Now, this is where the beauty of the new version of Elementor 2 comes in. We can start dropping content in there, but we can hook that into actual database-related information. So let's just come in and choose the element we want. So we're going to drag this image up. We're going to drop that in there. And you'll see we now have this new option which says Dynamic. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to hook into various sort of parts of our site, various dynamic information that's pulled in from the database, things like logos and page titles and so on. And we can then pull that information in. So if you've ever created a sort of dynamic website with Dreamweaver and you've gone into things like that, this is really going to be very familiar to you. If not, it's simple enough that you get your head around it in no time and start to really harness the power of this. So we're going to click on dynamic. That's then going to show us the options we have available for the particular type of widget we've placed in there. In this example, we've got a simple image. We can see we've got post featured image, site logo, or author profile picture. We want the site logo, so we're going to click on that. That'll pull in whatever logo has been associated with our site. So that's pretty cool. That's the first thing done. Next thing is we're going to come to the right hand side, click to add something else in there. Now we're going to go in and we're going to choose a menu. So you can see we've got a couple of options. We're going to choose the nav menu, which is one of the native functions inside Elementor itself. Drag and drop that over into the right hand side. You can see now we've got whatever menu structure is now loaded in. 
So with that loaded in, we've now got all the controls to go through and customize the way this menu looks. And there's a ton of options in here. Again, too much to cover in this video. This is just the basics of how you can use it. You can customize to your heart's content. And I will cover things like this in much more detail when the full version of Elementor 2.0 is actually released in April. But let's take a look at some of the options we have. You can see at the moment, this is sort of positioned over the left-hand side. I can simply come in and choose the right-hand side. I can choose what menu is actually going to be displayed in here. So if we've got multiple menus set up. I can pull in whatever I want. So if I was creating a custom footer, I may have a different menu structure to use in there, and I can pull that in using this method. You can see we've also got different kinds of layers. We can do things like a horizontal, vertical, or drop-down menu. And you can see once I click, it'll go through and it'll update in real time to show us the different changes. We'll leave that at horizontal, so that's pretty cool. We can go through and do things like underline, we can get rid of that, so we can say we want to put a background color in there, for example. You can see now when we mouse over, instead of the underline, we get a background color. We can deal with different fades and animations and so on, so we've got a lot of control of how we want to make this look, colors and so on. You can see we've got submenu indicators, and you can see if we've got submenus, we can go in and choose exactly what displays to show what that we've got an actual sort of submenu or multi-level menu going on in here. We've also got things like the breakpoints we want to work with for mobile and tablets, which is pretty cool. We can set this to full width if you want to. Tons of different options. We can come in then and jump in, and we can style the different options in there for normal, hover, active. We can control the typography, all those good things, and the same with the advanced and so on. So let's just say we're happy with that. One thing I want to do quickly is just select this, and I'm going to set that to be in the middle. So it sits in the middle of the actual content with the logo on the left-hand side. We'll hit Publish on there, and that now brings us over to the display conditions. And this is where you can really start to harness the power of the new Elementor 2.0 dynamic options. We not only can pull in sort of dynamic information, we can now specify where this particular component will be displayed on our site. So we can say add a condition, and we're not limited to one condition. We can sort of stack these on top of each other to get more complex if we want to. And you can see if we open this up, it says, where do you want to include this new template that you've created? We can have it to go into the entire site, the archives, into the singular sort of page layout and so on. We'll say we want this to be the entire site. Like I say, if I wanted to add another condition, I could come into that, click on there, and start to build these conditions up and get more complex. Let's just get rid of that. We'll hit Publish. And we'll just make sure everything is in place. OK, so we're now going to come out of this, exit to the dashboard. Now, there's one thing you need to make sure of when you're working with Elementor 2.0, especially the beta. This might be corrected when the final version comes out. If you don't publish this page at this point, once you've made those changes, it won't display properly. In other words, the template won't kind of be hooked into. So let's just click Publish on there, just to make sure that everything is committed into the database. Now, I'm using Ocean WP, so I'm just going to make sure that everything else is set up in here. So I'm going to specify this is going to be full width. I want to get rid of any margins on there and so on. And we'll hit Update again to make sure it's committed. Like I say this is Ocean WP, so you may not have to do this if you use an alternative theme. OK, so once that's done, now we can jump over and take a look at our new menu structure. So if I just jump over to my test page, you can see there's our new menu structure in place. So if we add new menu items, they'll display on the right-hand side. If we set an image to be worked with within our sort of uh, theme, that'll also be pulled in. So let's just jump in and take a look at how we can do that. Okay, so OceanWP is the theme that I'm using. So to be able to associate the logo with that, I need to jump into the Customize option. And once I've done that, I can come in and set the logo up. So once we've done that, anywhere that logo is referenced then throughout our site will be pulled in. So you can see at the moment, it's just displaying the blank placeholder. So what I need to do is come into the header section, come into logo and select my logo. And I'm going to use this one, which is part of the demo theme that's, or the demo widget that's included or the demo thing. Skip the cropping on there. And there's our logo inserted in there. So we'll publish that, jump over to our test site and refresh. And you can see there's our new custom header linked in throughout the entire site, pulling in dynamic data, but all set up and created inside Elementor 2.0. So this is really expanding how you can start to work with content. It really is a great way of being able to hook in your different templates into various different parts of your site. And one of those things I'm really excited to see in action when the final release of Elementor 2.0 comes out. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. That covers how we can create custom headers inside WordPress using Elementor 2.0.
I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we release new content. If you have comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or any of the things that are covered in the new Elemental 2.0, pop those in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation going on what you think are the great and the bad things about Elemental 2.0 and its forthcoming release. Well, until next time, take care.